How's it going, everybody? It's Pilot Flame, and we are back with a, another FPL stream here. We are looking at how I did in Game Week 10. We're also going to look at Game Week 11 and what fixtures are coming up for us there. We're going to see, you know, what we're potentially looking at transfer-wise. We're also going to be looking at who we should be looking at Man City assets-wise because Pep has come up with some statements, which are pretty damning if he continues to... Uh, uh, hold his word uh, for what he has been saying we're also going to be figuring out what should we do if we still are hanging on to spurs assets as well as this christmas period is on uh, you know is is coming up and we could see mass rotation among certain teams uh just a bit of housekeeping uh first and foremost if you haven't done so already make sure to follow us here on twitch this is where these uh vods on youtube come from as well as make sure to go subscribe over in the youtube channel it's free to do so on both of those so make sure you do that uh also this week will probably be the last week that i do some of the it depends on how jam-packed the weeks get uh, i'm not sure when the christmas period like games start to pile up uh really quickly but just some of the uh, some of the videos that we do are going to become less and less and less and then basically we're just going to be doing streams over the christmas period most likely because it's going to be like I know there's a there's a game on there's games on Boxing Day on the 26th, and then there's no games, and then there's games on the 28th. So it's pretty pretty hectic, uh, uh, you know, for 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 deadlines. So we're probably just going to do streams or, or like a couple of streams, maybe a video. We'll have to see during that period because it gets pretty pretty busy uh, during that time. So make sure to check those out, which is why you should follow us here uh, on Twitch. The vods will obviously go up on YouTube as well. But if you want to catch us live and ask questions in the chat make sure to uh, do so on that front and any changes or anything like that make sure to check them out uh, over on uh, on Twitter that's where we usually post any updates as well as I've been posting my lineup news when the game has been um, you know on a Friday so this week game start on a Friday again so there's gonna be no deadline official deadline stream is gonna be the night before uh, as per normal so I believe that's all I had to go through yep I think so uh, the internet has was a bit rough in the beginning, and now it seems to have steadied itself out a little bit, so we should be okay. So let's get into how the team did for this week. So we are looking at the team here, and we did uh, we did okay, I think. Uh, you know, we got three people that returned, but they were three fairly important ones. Um, we ended up with 52 points uh, overall, so we have 50 points currently on the board, but we get Burke in for uh, Sterling. So with his two points, it leaves 52. So two for McCarthy, Kilman makes three, Tellez makes four, uh, Rodriguez makes six, Calvert-Lewin makes eight, Bamford makes 10, Kane makes 12, Chilwell makes 20, Grealish makes 30, and Fernandez makes 50, plus Burke's two is 52. A uh, bit unfortunate that Kilman came on in the last minute. Would have liked the extra points that I would have got from Ailing. But apart from that, uh, overall, a week that I thought was going to be quite bad. Was very upset to see that Sterling didn't come on at all. After seeing City put five past, uh, uh, past uh, Burnley. And yeah, just a bit uh, unfortunate there. Morris did get the majority of the goals and all the points. Uh, De Bruyne ended up doing, uh, getting two assists and a bonus point, so he ended up with uh, 10 points, which was the same amount as Fernandez. So again, not the end of the world. Grealish also ended up with 10 as well. But if we had De Bruyne instead of Sterling, we'd have been looking at 62 points instead of 52 points, which would have been a pretty good game week. This is just above the average, but we, I think we end up with a, a uh, you know, a, a green arrow, a small green arrow, but it is a bigger one than what we had last week, which is just like couple ten thousands of places whereas this one's like a hundred uh, K or so uh, which isn't bad as long as the green as long as the arrows are green and not red then we should be fine um, but yeah only three players returned so McCarthy only ended up getting a save point didn't keep a clean sheet versus United conceding three goals Kilman came on as a sub Tellez uh, conceded twice Chilwell ended up getting a clean sheet and some bonus points, which is good. Grealish getting a goal and some bonus points there as well. I think he got max bonus points um, there. Uh, Fernandez, we captained, uh, who got a goal and assist, which was quite good, considering the start to the first half was terrible for United. 
Uh, Calvert-Lewin getting nothing, Bamford getting nothing, Kane getting nothing. So, overall, you know, there's going to be some pretty bad scores out there. I know there's going to be people with, like, Kane and Son blanking. There's going to be people going Sterling over De Bruyne, like myself. There's going to be people without Bruno Fernandes. There's going to be people without Grealish. You know, there's going to be a lot of different things uh, going on. I can see some uh, very, very low scores this week. But there's also probably some pretty, pretty high ones as well. Anyone who uh, had De Bruyne in uh, did well. So if you had De Bruyne, Grealish, Fernandez, and captained either De Bruyne or Fernandez, it didn't really matter. They all ended up with 10 points anyway. Uh, I can see people with double Chelsea or triple Chelsea defense did well this week. Um, uh, Leeds defense, if you had uh, Meslier or any of their defenders, you did well this week as well. I think he ended up with like an 11 pointer, which is insane. Um, but uh, overall, um, can't really complain because a green arrow is a green arrow and we'll take those as many weeks in a row as we can. So, uh, moving on to the fixtures, uh, that happened. So if you don't know how this goes, I have my handy dandy little notebook off to the side here. Basically we predict, uh, the scores for the game week. Um, and if you predict the exact score, right? then you get three points if you get the same result right. So let's say I predicted Newcastle to win 1-0 and they won 2-0. I guess that they would win and they did win, but just by a different scoreline, you get one point. And if you, I, I had predicted that Newcastle had won or lost or drawn and they won, then I get zero points. So that's how the scoring works. So if you want to play along, make sure to definitely do so. Uh, so let's see how we did. So Newcastle ended up winning 2-0. And we predicted, if I bring my little uh, notepad across here, my little snippet tool thing of the scores, I predicted a draw, 1-1. One, one. It ended up being a 2-0 for Newcastle. Very late 2-0, but a 2-0 nonetheless. Liverpool predicted to win 3-1 over Brighton. It was actually a 1-1 one, one draw, so we don't get anything there. Uh, City we predicted 3-0 over Burnley. They ended up winning 5-0, so we get one point. Uh, Leeds and Everton was not a 2-2 scoring draw, although I still I'm so so confused as to how the game ended up with only one goal in it. It just makes no sense to me. But uh, yeah, didn't get that one right either. West Brom ended up beating Sheffield United 1-0, so we got that one wrong. Southampton versus United was a 3-2 to United. I predicted 1-1, so nothing there either. Uh, Chelsea and Tottenham, we predicted a draw. It ended up uh, being a draw, but just by no no, so we got one point. Uh, Arsenal, Wolves, we predicted Wolves to win 1 0. They won 2 1. Uh, so we got a point there. Uh, Leicester falling to Fulham 2 1, and we predicted 3 0. So this is going to be a low scoring week. And West Ham versus Aston Villa. So our predictions were really bad this week. We only got three points and no exact ones there. Last week we got four, so we're sl we're slipping down. We've gone six five four three. Next week could be a two, which wouldn't be uh wouldn't be ideal. But uh, some of the scores I've had this season have been a lot lower than last season, and that's just due to the nature of just things being just so random this season, like the f like Leicester's five two over City and scores like that that are just a bit. Um, all over the place. Uh, clean sheet, we did get right though. Man City. Uh, Guaita uh, did not get uh, as many points as uh, I would have hoped, being a differential pick. Uh, Cancelo did play at all. Uh, so he was out. Walcott didn't return. And Vardy did get an assist. So we did get two out of five right on that. But uh, some, some talking points for the week. Um, our, our one of our picks that could be potentially coming in this week. I just got to make sure that certain players um, uh, like De Bruyne or many Man City assets that uh, play in Champions League come out A-OK. -okay. So I got to wait till the end of tomorrow. So hopefully uh, James doesn't go down because that'll be point one that I miss out on him because I'm potentially going to get rid of him. Uh, same with Kane. I don't want him to lose any more value because we'll potentially get uh, some decent value out of him if we go to sell him this week. Um, so yeah, uh, potentially looking at, uh, at that for, for Callum Wilson, to potentially bring him in maybe Antonio. Uh, but I think Callum Wilson's fixtures are just a lot better. And I think that he's just kind of their talisman. He also takes penalties as well, but I'm not sure if Antonio takes penalties for West Ham, but, uh, I would assume he does. Um, but we'll see. Brighton versus Liverpool. I mean, 
the penalty was soft. Was it a penalty? There was contact, but again, uh, Welbeck gets to the ball and Robertson kicks him. And at the end of the day, is that a pe is that a foul everywhere else elsewhere outside of the box? It is. So in my opinion, I think it mu it has to be given as a penalty. Was it uh, you know harsh because it was at the very end of the game? Of course it was. But Mope could have scored a penalty earlier on in the game, and they could have been up potentially even more. So I think a draw was potentially a fair result uh, on the night uh, for Brighton and Liverpool. Uh, City. Again, City just blasted Burnley. I mean, we knew that that was going to happen um, just by how much. We predicted 3-0. It turns out all the goals came from Riyad Mahrez. So Mahrez ended up with a massive score. Uh, he got three goals. Mendy got one. Torres got one. De Bruyne with two assists. Walker an assist. Foden came on and literally got an assist almost immediately. Um, uh, Jesus with an assist. And uh, we'll go over the Pep uh, Guardiola comments uh, once we... Uh, finish off our predictions uh, for uh, the game coming up as well. Uh, Leeds Everton. I'm I'm actually gonna look up the the stats really quickly uh, on this because it was baffling uh, how there wasn't more than one goal in this game. I'm so confused. Leeds had 23 shots. Everton had 15. And how there was only one goal in the game. I don't know. I have no clue. 38 total shots in the whole game. And I'm just so confused as to how there was only one goal in the entire game. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, Leeds got a clean sheet. Leeds have kept two clean sheets in two. And since Calvin Phillips come back in, look quite good. So could be interesting. Uh, Leeds defense could be back on uh, what they have this week uh, coming up. Uh, Chelsea, probably not the greatest, but... Uh, Maybe some fixtures after that could be quite good. Or potentially as like a rotation um, rotation defender. So you have like two mainstays. So let's say you play your, um, you know, your, your Chilwell, your Reese James, um, and then another more expensive defender. And then you have like a couple of rotation defenders. So you maybe you have like a Kilman, a Lamptey, a Ailing, and you kind of pick the best one of those three. Uh, West Brom versus Sheffield United. Apparently, Ollie Burke could have potentially scored a couple of times, but I wasn't really too interested in the game. Um, and West Brom ended up getting three points for themselves. And Sheffield United, they're in some trouble. And I think that you have to start questioning, potentially, if there needs to be a change in management. I know they've been hit with injuries, and I know Wilder did so well for them last season. But you can't just keep going, 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 and just keep not getting results. I mean, they've played, what, 10 games now, and they've gotten one draw, and the rest have been losses, so potentially some uh, some readjusting there. And speaking of readjusting, 2-0 down in the f after the end of the first half for United, coming back 3-2 by an Edison Cavani masterclass. He ended up uh, getting two goals and an assist for himself there, sparked off in the beginning by Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Chelsea versus Spurs, we were going to do a tactics talk on that, but there was literally only one talking point in the whole game, and that was pretty much the offside goal. Apart from that, really wasn't much to talk about. I usually like to get at least three points to kind of go over. There wasn't any goals in the game. There wasn't any, like, oh, definite red cards. There wasn't any penalty appeals, really. Um, no drama, no nothing. It was pretty much a standard just... Mourinho style of performance he got a draw away from home and he's going to look to get a, a win at home when he goes to play Chelsea so we'll see uh Wolves versus Arsenal uh we saw a collision between David Luiz and Jimenez at the beginning of the game and apparently Jimenez is doing fine but that was like you heard the crack of like their heads hitting each other at the same time and it was uh he was down for a very long time and uh, let's just hope that he recovers quite well because apparently that he had some uh, like a fracture in like a skull or where like his eye is or something like that. So that could be that could take a while to potentially heal something something that bad, especially um, you know to you know fully heal and being able to head a football again. Um, people are saying that there's been similar injuries and players haven't played ever again. You know it could be a you know it could be a bit interesting. So we have to kind of see. Um, See kind of how that plays out. Uh, overall, I, we just hope that Jimenez, you know, recovers. 
uh, David Luiz was on the field with a bandage around his head and bleeding from it. I don't know why they didn't make him change that or cover it up a little bit more. But um, regardless of that factor, Arsenal again looked a bit toothless up front and only managed to get the one goal off of a cross, uh, which Gabriel put in uh, nicely from William. Uh, but Perez looked lively. Neto again looking quite good. Uh, Triari caused so many problems. And um, yeah, Wolves are getting getting the win. And uh, Fabio Silva came on, looked okay. I think that Nuno's, we see that he's experimenting with his team uh, with two at the back. So this could be the, you know, two center backs. This could potentially be the end of Kilman, maybe. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, so happy with Cavani show. Uh, look like the good old days. Yeah, just a proper, proper striker uh, scoring uh, scoring the goals uh, up front, which was uh, nice to see. Uh, you know, he, he's different than Martial. He, like, Martial can be like a left winger slash like more intricate forward, uh, whereas Cavani's more of like the break your nose to get in the box and score. Uh, and Rashford's more of like an inside forward. He's not really like a number nine. So, um, and Mason Greenwood's still trying to get there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely good to, good to see. I think you have to potentially start him. Although there is some controversy around, uh, one of his Instagram posts. Won't get into it too much, but, uh, basically he could potentially be seeing a potential suspension, um, for, uh, some phrases that he, uh, that he used on an Instagram post after the game. So. Um, again, he came out and said that basically he had no intent. It doesn't, he had no intention for it to mean that sort of thing. We'll have to see how it was interpreted. Not going to get into it too, too much, but it's basically brought up a whole controversy thing. And, and it's a, it's, it's to me, potentially it seems like a clash of clash of cultures, but you should be knowing I'm coming into a league where. They're they're trying to stamp out um, they're trying to stamp out uh, racism in the game, and that phrase can be seen in that sort of light, uh, in in you know the English Premier League culture, and you know maybe from Uruguay it potentially means something different, but in the Premier League it can be recognized as something that could be seen as offensive. Um, so whatever comes from that, I don't know. I'm not going to take any sides on it and just see what the FA decides to do. They banned him for three games. And he, I mean, he came out and apologized. So clearly he knows that he was in the wrong uh, of some kind. Uh, whether he meant it in, uh, you know, on, a nice way or, or a not so nice way, we don't know. But it seemed it was more of a, a nicer gesture. And apparently it means something different. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that transpires. Um, but I think Cavani... Uh, is going to play in the Champions League and maybe repercussions are seen after that but we'll have to see um, United have a lot of injuries uh, now uh, after uh, what, we've, what we've seen so could potentially have like six major uh, team uh, first team players out um, so but yeah Cavani is definitely like a he's just like a proper forward like Gallo is kind of that but he's just not as good so that's kind of the, the only problem there uh, moving on, Leicester versus Fulham. So the games today. Um, happy that Vardy barely came out away with anything. I mean, Leicester were getting slapped for the first like 60 or so minutes. Like Fulham had them running ragged the entire game um, until they decided to park the bus, which was basically the first 60 or so minutes. Um, and then you know Leicester made change at halftime. Didn't make anything anything any better. Uh, Vardy with a good knockdown for uh, Barnes to score. And for those that follow the scout cast, uh, they finally broke the curse. Somebody actually scored finally uh, and did well as a, as a differential pick. I think the guy picked the Harvey Barnes. So, uh, But Fulham, again, they, they took had a penalty taker who actually scored, which was nice to see. And uh, Fulham getting some valuable three points. And you saw how much it meant to Scott Parker in them because he was, you know, just overjoyed um, at the end of the game. Um, and then lastly, well, West Ham and Aston Villa. Again, David Moyes getting another win for himself. I actually want to check the Premier League table just quickly here uh, while, I'm, uh, while I'm thinking about it because I want to know where West Ham and the likes are there. West Ham's in fifth place at the moment. West Ham's on 17 points. Now, there are some teams that have games in hand. 
So the likes of Manchester United would go up to 19 points if they won their game in hand. Villa would go up to 18 points if they get their game in hand. Mad City, same, 18 points. Uh, and there's one other team, I believe it's Burnley. If they won their game in hand versus United, they would go up to eight points. But likelihood is United and City will win those games based on form currently. And then United will be propelled uh, basically in fourth place. They'd be ahead of Leicester by one point with their game in hand. Currently at the top of the top of the league, uh, we got uh, Spurs and Liverpool with Chelsea not so far behind. Leicester losing their last uh, two, I believe. Uh, Everton losing four out of the last five, which is great. Same with Aston Villa. So definitely interesting. Uh, definitely anyone's game uh, this year. So he says, hey, finally, I hope you're doing well. I am. I hope you're doing well as well. So here's my midfield. Salah, Bruno, Hamas, Rodriguez, Grealish, and Foden. I only have Foden as a Man City player. Do you think I should bring in KDB instead of Salah or Bruno or keep it as is? Um, we'll get on to that in just a second uh, when I go over to the fixtures here. So let's bring these over and we'll go with our score predictions and whatnot as well. So... Um, I'm actually going to actually I'll touch on that just because of the fixtures now that we have them up on the screen. So basically, I think that Liverpool midfielders aren't mandatory this week because defensively they're still quite Wolves is still quite solid. Uh, Liverpool still only scored one goal versus Brighton. Um, Salah didn't look too impressed coming off, and I would I always wait for um, I would wait for uh, you know the press conferences. So if there is anyone that you could potentially take out of your team this week, it would be Salah, in my opinion. If it was a free transfer, you could take out Salah. You could you could basically do uh, what they call on the Scoutcast, the, like the hokey cokey, which is basically you take somebody out only to bring them back in the next week. So you, in this week, if you have Mane or Salah in your team, you take them out, you bring in De Bruyne or whatever Man City mid you want. Most likely De Bruyne because he's nailed. And then they play versus Fulham. They get a lot of points. You then take De Bruyne out because he then plays Man United. The following game week, you bring in Salah, you play or, or Mane, you play him uh, versus uh, Fulham. And then you bring in somebody, you bring in a Man City mid after that because I believe they play uh, West Brom in game week 13. Yeah, they play West Brom in game week 13. Um, and then Liverpool plays Spurs. So you can literally go from Salah to De Bruyne, from De Bruyne back to Salah, from Salah to De Bruyne again, if you want. Then, uh, City have Southampton, Liverpool have Crystal Palace, so you could potentially, and you know, Leeds is going to be a tough game versus United, even though it's at home, so potentially you can get rid of Bruno and that, bring in Mane or Salah or something like that, and then you have that set up already for the West Brom at home fixture, United also play Leicester, so that's going to be a tougher game for them probably, um, City versus Newcastle, the double City will still be in effect for you there, so that's probably how i would go about it overall i don't think liverpool is mandatory this week i think you can definitely get away with not having liverpool um i i mean we kind of got away with it this week if you didn't have liverpool salah only getting an assist uh was, was good um and this week i think that it'll probably be something similar liverpool might end up drawing 1-1 maybe they win 1-0 maybe it's a 2-1 but um I think that their injuries are really starting to pile up and it could hamper them uh, quite a lot. Uh, so if I had to pick, I would say uh, bringing KDB for Salah this week. Um, that's just my opinion. And this is going on the assumption that you can go to and from, to and from, to and from with one transfer um, each week if you wanted to do that. That's what I would do. Um, as for the rest of them, Bruno I think is fine versus West Ham. Potentially a captaincy choice uh, versus West Ham. Um, versus Man City again. It's a derby. Anything's possible. He's a big name, a big game player. So I, you know, I would keep him in there for that. Um, like I said, the Leeds and Leicester fixtures a bit tougher. Uh, Grealish is fine up until the end of the Christmas period. Hamas Rodriguez potentially look to get rid of uh, after this week. Potentially, I might have to get rid of him a week early. Uh, but again, still looking like the guy who is the assist of the assister. Um, yet there's a couple of good games right off the bat when the teams had red cards and stuff like that. But again, Everton just haven't looked as good. And now with Dina out potentially long term, uh, that could cause problems for the team. So that's my uh, 
that's my little uh, spiel on it. So hopefully, hopefully you got all of that. Um, uh, but yeah, Newcastle versus Aston Villa. I think that this could be closer than what it actually looks on paper. Um, I think Aston Villa will probably win, but I think both teams will concede. Um, and I think that Aston Villa is just barely good enough to beat Newcastle. I think they win 2-1. Would you keep Bruno and Son or get in Salah and KDB uh, or one? Would I keep Bruno and Son or get in Salah and KDB or one? Uh, well, I would bring in KDB this week. If you can get KDB... Uh, for Son this week, that would probably be the best, I would think. I would say keep Bruno for this. Bruno's better away from home. Uh, Son has Arsenal, who are going to be a lot more defensive. Um, yes, they conceded two to Wolves, but it's a it's a North London derby. Things can get scrappy. Players can get sent off. You know, things can happen. So, I would say KDB is probably the most mandatory player, assuming he stays fit and healthy um, and doesn't pick up a knock or something like that. Uh, before uh, the end of the week, so I would say just make just just check and wait and see for the the press conferences just to see KDB. If you want to do an early transfer and you think that Pep's not going to play him at all and you just rest him in the Champions League because I don't think they need to actually play any of their big players at all because they're they're already through as far as I know. So um, I would say KDB is like the guy to have in this coming game week for sure because. Uh, we'll get onto Pep's comments after I finish the predictions here, but it they were pretty damning. So, uh, Burnley versus Everton. I think Everton should win this game, but I think Everton will concede a goal. I'm gonna go with just the marginal two-one win. Man City versus Fulham. Go big or go home. Uh, actually, Fulham played some decent stuff. I'll, I'll give them a goal here. I won't go too unrealistic. Uh, West Ham versus United. I think United went up grinding this one out. I think they're, you know, with Cavani plays. Um, and if you have, um, you know, a situation where Bruno can do what he does. Uh, and he, away from home, he's going to be quite good at doing that. West Ham's defense still looked fallible. Um, I don't even know if that's a correct term. But basically, they, they, they were definitely open at, at points. And uh, United can definitely, uh, you know beat that uh there is one actual factor which could come into play which is the fact that west ham will have 2,000 fans in the stadium which is something that's going to be not it's going to be pretty foreign to the players having fans in the stadium although it is only 2,000 of them but they might be in you know somewhat closer proximity to each other whereas they're actually being heard so it could be quite interesting uh, Grealish was unbelievable tonight. He even got three bonus on a losing side. Hard to trade him out at the stage. Yeah, good value. Yeah, I have a plan to basically have him all the way up until the last game uh, before our wild card, basically. Um, or thereabouts. So, but I'll basically have him for all the pretty good fixtures. Uh, what about Mars? I was thinking upgrading Foden into Mars. Forget about KDB. I mean, you could do that, but I think that two Man City players going into the Fulham game is probably what you're looking for. Same with the West Brom game. You probably want two City players. Because if they blast Burnley 5 no, like that, and Pep's comments suggest that he's going to play players who are scoring goals, then probably two Man City players is probably what you're looking at. Mamaris could be good. Um, I'll come on to that comment in the second, Mono, once I finish all of these uh, all of these predictions and the differential picks for, for this week. Uh, it, the points actually based on that Mars, Mars and Sterling, uh, sort of. Chelsea versus Leeds. This could be quite interesting. Chelsea's defense has been quite good, but they create um, create chances. Lampard looked a bit more on the pragmatic side versus Spurs. I think Leeds could potentially cause them problems. I still think Chelsea will edge it though. I think two one is a fair result. Uh, West Brom versus Palace. I think Palace are better than West Brom. Uh, I think they'll win the game one nil. Leicester versus Sheffield United. Sheffield United can't score, basically. But if they're going to score um, at all, it might be versus Leicester. But I think Leicester will be quite comfortable in this. I see a 2-0 no win. Uh, Tottenham versus Arsenal. I think a Mourinho 1-0 win is on the cards here, even though it is a London derby. But I just don't see Arsenal scoring versus Mourinho's defense. Uh, Liverpool versus Wolves. I think it could be a grind-out result for Liverpool. And I can see them uh, you know, getting back to winning ways here. 
And then lastly, Brighton versus Southampton, two teams that are usually quite open. I'm going to edge this one to Southampton 2-1 as well. So a lot of close ones uh, this game week uh, overall. Uh, for the differential picks uh, and clean sheet for the week, uh, I think I'm actually going to... Actually, I'm going to change this so that it... Refer uh, I don't think Fulham will score. I think City's defense has been a lot better um, in recent weeks. So we'll go with that. So clean sheet, Man City. Um, again, again, it's Fulham. So hopefully they should keep a clean sheet. Uh, in goal, I'm going to go with Darlow. I think he's uh, even if they do manage to uh, not keep a clean sheet, he's going to get a lot of saves. And I think he's made the most saves and faced the most shots this, uh, this season uh, by any goalkeeper. And he didn't play like the first game or two, which is insane. So um, if Aston Villa's shots aren't on point, um, Newcastle can end up winning, a, getting a, a win on the road there. Uh, Ruben Diaz, someone who's uh, below 5% owned, could be uh, quite good uh, as a, you know, a, just a pick overall, to be honest. Uh, he could be could be a, a really good, good from set pieces, seems to be playing every game. Pep says he doesn't make mistakes, so could be quite good. Uh, Zaha is someone who's been out uh, with the virus, and he could be coming back this week. And what better week to come back versus West Brom? So I think he could potentially be involved in the action there. He is still fairly highly owned. I think like 17%, uh, but he could be quite good there. And then Antonio is the last one here. He came off after 45 minutes, which is a bit weird. I don't know if that was precautionary just because he hadn't seen minutes or if he's actually injured. If he is injured, then obviously don't go with him. But if he's, you know, he's fine. It was just, you know, 45 minutes and he was just tired. Um, and they didn't want to push him or that was the plan from from the beginning uh, then Antonio could be a very good pick overall uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my team up on the screen while we talk about Man City really quickly so Man City uh, Pep Guardiola came out with comments um, I don't know if it was for his it was a, if it was comments after they beat Burnley or if it was comments for the embargoed press conference for versus Porto but basically in a roundabout way what he said was players who score goals have more likely chance of playing and players who are playing well and don't make mistakes will continue to play so basically that what that tells any he, and he also came out i said another comment which was something along the lines of if players think that they're just being rested for rotation purposes and they think, oh, I'm going to get my chance. I'm going to get to play next week. He says they've got another thing coming. Which makes me think that a certain Raheem Sterling potentially could be a rotation risk for this week. Now, he could be full of himself and talking out of his behind. But he seemed pretty serious about that. And it made sense with his, with his selection. So I thought, oh, he's going to play Aguero, get him some minutes off the start, but apparently he had a setback. Okay, fine. My pep roulette, I got a lot of the players wrong. So clearly he's going with a different mindset now. So Fernandinho didn't just come straight back in because he likes how Rodri's been playing, even though I think Rodri hasn't been that great this season defensively. Um, Phil Foden, I don't know what he has to do. So clearly there's there's an ambiguity there for, for Phil Foden, who's been playing well for both Ben City when he plays and when he plays for uh, England. So I'm not sure how that's going on. Uh, Bernardo Silva was rightfully dropped. So after these comments, he, you know, when he came out and said them, Bernardo Silva was one of the players to get dropped. Morris was one of the players to come in. Uh, Jesus still played. He also, I think, mentioned specifically that Jesus needs to start scoring. Uh, so potentially he could be playing Sterling as a false nine. Maybe maybe tomorrow versus Porto. Who knows? Uh, could be quite a, could be quite interesting. So in terms of the rotation risk, uh, uh, Mono Mars and Sterling. I think Mars Mars scored a hat trick. I think he plays in the next Premier League game. I'm pretty certain of that. If we're going off these comments, Sterling. We have to see how well he does in the Champions League because it seems like his place is not guaranteed, especially since Ferran Torres scored again. So players that are scoring goals and putting away chances, which Pep was a bit uh, not too happy about, as we know, Man City's probably one big weakness is that they are wasteful. So the amount of chances that they do get, um, they don't necessarily put them away when they should. So again, I meant it's uh, one or the other. I think uh, Mares is probably less of a rotation risk than Sterling. Any Man City player is potentially at a risk of rotation just because of 
Pep Guardiola. That's just how he is. I think the most nailed player is Ederson. That's obviously makes the most sense considering he's the goalkeeper and he plays basically every game for them. The next most nailed on player I would say is Ruben Diaz. He pretty much plays every game. Um, he's come to the club. He's new. He doesn't make mistakes and he hasn't had a past uh, injury record. Uh, Laporte, I would say, is probably in terms of uh, nailedness would be behind KDB, who I would say is after Diaz. Because, again, KDB can get rested from time to time because of how valuable he is. Uh, Laporte has an injury, uh, you know, a decent injury record, which is why he probably didn't play uh, versus Burnley. A team that's quite physical in the air um, and can be, be rough and tough. Uh, so I guess a bit of protection uh, overall there. Um, and then after that, it's just whichever players are in form, basically. So Mendy came in and scored. Cancelo didn't play and could potentially, maybe Mendy's going to keep playing because very rarely he plays a fullback two games in a row uh, midweek and then on the weekend, uh, unless it's Kyle Walker, because Kyle Walker plays pretty good most of the time. And not many players can do what Kyle Walker does uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. Uh, in City's team, at least, and based on the players that they have. It's hard to pick Sterling in a rotation risk at such a high price. Has to be KDB and elsewhere, maybe Diaz. Exactly. That's why a lot of people can be going to safe picks. KDB and Diaz is like the, the, the City double up. Uh, is Mars on pens ahead of KDB? No, probably not. Uh, KDB missed one. Yeah, he missed one. He'll know that he didn't want to miss it or shouldn't have missed it. But I'm um, pretty sure he will. he'll still be on penalties no matter what. The question would be when Aguero comes back, will he be on penalties? But when Aguero will be back, I don't know. Because apparently he had a bit of a, you know, he played 15 minutes, then he was back in training. Uh, and apparently his knee flared up of some kind. Now this is the, this the after the surgery, this knee injury. So it could be something where he's re-aggravated it. Like, it's not fully healed. I, I I don't know what's going on with Aguero. Um, you know, maybe... And then people would say, oh yeah, you know, the golden rule of Man City is if Aguero is out, then bring in Jesus. That is an option. You can do that. It's very easy to do that, to go from Kane to, to Jesus. But again, the comments from Pep saying that, uh, you know, he's he needs to start scoring... Could make me believe that Pep could go to Ferran Torres false nine, which they did and had very good success with. They created a lot of chances and they end up scoring with it. So, so City uh, City are annoyed that they didn't snap up Werner. Um, that was apparently a rumor that Pep Guardiola did contact Timo Werner, uh, but Werner was just like, "Yeah, no, I'm not going there." Um, Liverpool, in their case, was apparently like Klopp wanted him. Uh, but apparently it was twofold. It was one, the the price tag was was too high. I think that was the initial the initial um, initial assessment of Werner, and then two, there was something along the lines of the fact that he is not a super consistent player. He's very streaky, so like he'll go on a ten game run and he'll score fourteen goals. In those games where some of those games it might be just straight overkill to score um so you might score like hat trick hat trick brace brace and then for 10 games after that he won't even get a sniff like he'll, he'll just miss a bunch of chances so apparently that was one of the one of the assessments which and then for chelsea he want he was wanted to go there because he knows that or he probably had the inclination that havertz was going there too which is his german national teammate so do you think United will try to open the wallet in January, seeing as the title is a little bit more open? Uh, the Glazers are quite cheap when it comes to that sort of stuff. But I would say if there's any player that United need right now, it is a center back for sure. Um, I think that potentially a you know, left-footed center back or just a center back in general that has any pace allows for uh, you know, a lot more uh, potential formations to be played uh, with you know more... Um, more conviction as it were so as an example you ain't got to play mctominy and fred in front of the back 
you know, the back line anymore. You can play Fred and Van Der Beek. You can play uh, Van Der Beek and Pogba if you have the likes of Maguire who's going to go up and win the duels. And then you have, like, let's say, I'll use Upper Meccano as an example, but somebody with a center back with pace, preferably one who's left footed. Um, yeah, like Upper Meccano. Uh, uh, or the, the Pau Torres from Villarreal. Uh, these these sorts of players who have really good range of passing, really aggressive, uh, very fast center backs who can cover basically Maguire's like flaws, as it were. And in in the event that you know Van Der Beek and, and and Pogba don't really get in the tackle, you know that Maguire can come in comfortably and make that tackle without knowing that oh no, I'm f you know 40 yards out from my own goal. If this guy skins me, uh, I have to ho hope that Lindelof can catch up with him. No, it'll be like oh yeah, Upper Makano or Torres comes across and just sweeps it away because they're just ridiculously fast, you know. That's why Vidic was as good as what he was, because he knew that if he managed to, you know, go in for a tackle and he managed and he missed it or somebody went by him, he knew that Ferdinand was smart enough to be like, okay, he's going in. I'm going to wait for if this guy goes by him and be right there when he does. So it's just one of those ones there. But I think that's probably mandatory. I would I would think um, a right winger would be nice. I mean, we've been harping up the trio Jaden Sancho for the longest time, but whatever happens with that i don't know but yeah basically the most nailed players is kdb diaz and ederson uh players who do well will get minutes for sure uh so at the moment it looks like uh Ferran torres and Riyad Mahrez are going to be the two players that uh, uh will continue to play because they've been doing well and sterling might see himself on the bench come fulham at home we will have to see However, if Jesus um, doesn't score, then could be could be issues there, and uh, he might be moved out. Torres might go in at false nine, and Sterling might come in at left wing. Who knows? Again, it's Pepper Roulette for a reason, and uh, a lot of people were like, "Well, you got a lot of these wrong," and and the ones that you did get were uh, were were quite obvious. Well, yes, that's usually how Pepper Roulette works. That's why. He, I feel like sometimes he just spins the board and whatever he throws a dart at, that's who plays. But he's given us more context. Let's see if he follows that line of thought. And if he does, then we should see the likes of uh, Jesus and, uh, you know, and and, and Sterling um, and, and, you know, the, these two sorts of players who haven't been putting their chances away benched again. We should see that, but uh, we'll see. How do I rate Grealish? I think he's a fantastic player. I think that I would like to see him potentially do things a lot more centrally. But again, coming off the left, you have a lot more um, uh, leeway, basically. Um, and uh, he can, you know, kind of drift and do what he needs to do. Uh, but I'd like to see him play in the number 10 role. I think it'd be quite interesting there. Um, but again, they like to play him off the left because he's very good there. Um, and I think he's a fantastic player. He's a talisman player. Um, I like to see him on penalties now that Watkins is missed. That would greatly enhance his FPL value as well. So that'd be nice to see. Don't mean to change the subject, but is anybody looking at Jota? Yes, there are a lot of people looking at Diego Jota. I think the 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 thing that people are trying to you know kind of uh, be wary of is the fact that Jota is a player who is in you know supposed to come in and be like a bench player he was supposed to be this player where you know Firmino, Mane, Salah that's just not working today we're bringing in uh we're bringing in Jota or you know our midfield three of of Henderson, Wijnaldum, Thiago we just we just we, we need somebody else up there we need to get a more attacking option on there Henderson you're coming off Jota you're going in there but what Klopp's had happened to his squad is he's had both his starting center backs go down in Gomez and Van Dyke. Uh, James Milner looks to be out now too. Uh, Thiago's had a, a longish term injury. Uh, Matip and uh, Fabinho have only just come back. Uh, Mane was out uh, with the virus. Salah's only just come back from having the virus. Uh, Firmino doesn't really score. Um, you know, Henderson's uh, been injured as well. I'm just trying to go through all the... Li Robertson had a slight injury. Trent's out for another couple of weeks. So he's had to find a... You know, try to reinvigorate the squad and change it up. And Jota's come in and done that exactly. Um, with Jota, they can play a 4-2-3-1. They can play 
uh, a 4 3 3. They can do a bunch of things. Jota can literally play the number 10, the false 9 for uh, Mino role, uh, left wing or right wing in a midfield 3. He can do play every single one of those roles, which is why his value is so good um, for, for Klopp's Liverpool team and why he's you know becoming a, a very important player for them. Um, I think that you can expect him to be benched at some point. Uh, that will happen, uh, but not as much as the likes of what you're seeing with Foden at the moment. Where Foden, you just don't know if he's going to play at all. Jota, you know he's going to play, and you know that he's going to be in probably the first sub if things aren't going well for sure off the bench every game for Liverpool. So you know he's going to get some type of minutes. Um, but I think he's undroppable at the moment. I think he's, he's he's doing well, and at six point, I think he's six point eight million. Um, could be an easy downgrade from James Rodriguez. So. Uh, we'll see. Uh, mandatory for this game week coming against Wolves? Probably not. Um, but when uh, when Liverpool go to play Fulham, potentially Liverpool double up, Liverpool double up could be good there. Uh, and then when they go to play Crystal Palace and West Brom on back-to-backs, uh, could be a potential Liverpool double up there as well. So, yeah, for the next four game weeks, uh, Fulham and West Brom, would Salah or Jota be a better option? I think Salah, personally. Um, just because penalties. That's the whole whole argument. And, and Salah, like, he tends to take the most shots. And probably by the time they go to play Fulham, he'll be back and, you know, getting, getting involved more and more often. Again, things can definitely change. Effectively, uh, Mane had his rest this week. Salah had his rest because of COVID and he got taken off early this week as well. Uh, this week gone, rather. And I think that it's just a matter of uh, matter of time before they just start clicking. Um, I would expect Firmino one of these weeks to be rested, probably. Um, maybe if it's in the Champions League. Uh, maybe if it's on the weekend uh, up, against, um, up against Wolves. We'll see. Uh, but his type of invention is super, super crucial. And he usually gets taken off earlier anyway um, for Mino. So I think that, um, I think that uh, you know, that's it's just one of those things where he's probably okay. Um, but in terms of, they're probably going to play against teams that like to sit back and defend. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Klopp plays all four of them versus Wolves to try to break them down. Would not be surprised. Um, but he could also go the other way and say that we need to play a bit more defensively because of, Triari and Pedence and Neto and these sorts of players, but with Jimenez out, they could be a different different outlet. Do you think Leicester were caught up? Uh, were caught out uh, tonight versus uh, Fulham? Yeah, I think they were. I think that uh, they went in with the wrong wrong formation. They went with five at the back or three at the back. You know, five in midfield didn't work out at all. Madison was terrible. Um, and picking up spaces that Tillemans wants to run into. Uh, Vardy basically got no chances, pretty much, um, with that within the first half. And for a team that had five basically in midfield and three down the back, they didn't have control of the midfield, which makes no sense to me. Um, but uh, overall, I think they just were caught off guard, and their changes didn't change anything. And I think Fulham have been playing a little bit better. Uh, but against teams that move the ball quick and move it accurately, uh, they will get punished for it. So City are very good at, you know, denying being pressed, basically. Uh, Leicester, not so much. Uh, with Ndidi in there, maybe maybe so. Uh, with Pereira in there, maybe so. Uh, but uh, without those two, don't see it. Don't see potentially happening. And Fulham, every time they got the ball, it was 15, 20 yards up the pitch. Direct, 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 and it was a uh, quite, quite, uh, quite good to see actually. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to uh, the team that I have going into this week. So we've gone with Lamptey uh, at home to Southampton over the likes of Ailing versus Chelsea or Kilman. I think Chelsea will definitely score. Um, you know, le uh, Leeds will leave themselves on the break for sure. Um, I am playing Chilwell. Uh, because it's Chilwell and he could get attacking returns. Uh, tell us, same thing, even though they could potentially both concede. Uh, McCarthy and Brighton uh, versus Brighton. That potentially could be a double clean sheet here if they both end up no-no. That would be ideal. 
Uh, we have the Everton boys currently uh, as the team stands uh, versus uh, Burnley. So potentially some returns there. Grealish versus Newcastle. He's going nowhere. He got some good points tonight uh, for a game week 10. Fernandez coming off a 10 pointer as well. Could potentially be a captaincy option this week. We'll see. Uh, Bamford versus Chelsea. Uh, Sterling's not going anywhere unless, um, you know, unless something happens. Um, but again, even if he gets 30 minutes off the bench, he's not going to be my captain. Um, De Bruyne will come in this week for sure. It's just a matter of how I'm going to do it. Um, and Kane is probably going to be the one that makes way. Because Kane, um, he he's getting lower and lower points and doesn't look to be... Um, to be getting as many chances as what he was. Uh, Arsenal, very defensive team. Crystal Palace, very defensive team. Liverpool, maybe he gets something there, but it is away. And Mourinho probably just want to get a draw out of that. And then these are the fixtures we want him back for uh, when he plays against the bad teams. Uh, De Bruyne or Vardy for captaincy this week. Kane for Vardy. Kane could be for Vardy this week, potentially. Um, but I think I want uh, De Bruyne over Vardy. Uh, Vardy away to Sheffield United. Is he a better captaincy option than De Bruyne? There's no way that it's gonna gonna be possible because the amount of chances that I saw uh, with a lot of midfielders, a lot of creativity potentially in the in the middle of the park for Leicester, and they couldn't even create it versus Fulham. I think Sheffield United do play a very run and gun style uh, when they do get the ball. Um, they're just not as clinical up front. I would say, or as good with quality up front, even though they have like six strikers on the book or on the books. And Leicester don't seem to be in a good vein of form or very inconsistent. So that's why I was kind of very wary of Vardy. Plus his underlying numbers don't show that he's going to score from open play very regularly. So I would definitely say De Bruyne. If, if, if we know Fulham are going to potentially get burnt on the counter, De Bruyne with a long sweeping ball into somebody could potentially be very lethal. I think De Bruyne is looking good here, and I potentially think that City might get a penalty as well, which De Bruyne will be on, and he'll score it this time for sure. Um, but uh, Kane for Vardy could be a good transfer, but I think that I'm going to alleviate it for uh, more funds um, uh, elsewhere. So this is the transfer screen we have going on here. And these are this was this is the set of transfers that I'm looking to potentially do over the next few game weeks. So uh, what I'm looking to do is James Rodriguez and Kane out. Even though James Rodriguez has um, has Burnley this week, just doesn't look quite quite there. So and De Bruyne would would come in uh, for sure up front. Uh, I haven't really decided on this as of yet, but it would either be Callum Wilson or it would be um, Antonio, depending on the fitness of Antonio. Callum Wilson has the fixtures. Antonio has the being Antonio factor and uh, being quite good. Um, then for game week 12, uh, we would pick and choose uh, based on who we want to keep. Uh, it would most likely be De Bruyne because he's, he's nailed on. Uh, for De Bruyne to play in the Manchester Derby. And if there's anyone who's going to score, it's probably De Bruyne over Sterling. Because I don't think Sterling's ever scored versus United um, since he's played at City. So he would make way. Uh, we would bring uh, Salah or Mane back in. We'll just say it's Salah for game week 12. Uh, that would be the captaincy for, for Fulham. Um, then we would uh, take out Salah. And then I'm looking at one of the cheaper Manchester City mids. So this is like the Ferran Torreses. This is the Riyad Mahrez's. These are the, you know, these sorts of players. So I'm going to just go with Mahrez just because he's the most expensive, I believe, out of all of them. So bringing Riyad Mahrez back for uh, game week 13 for West Brom at home. Again, that'll be Captain De Bruyne in 13. Potentially could Captain Fernandez because he's away to Sheffield United. Last time they played Sheffield United, they won 3-0, I believe, United won. And I think Fernandez got a brace, if I'm correct. Let me just uh, double-check that. Uh, uh, Sheffield United. Uh, or was it a Martial hat-trick? That was the last home game. 
Marshall goal, Rashford assist, Marshall goal, Wamasaka assist, Marshall goal, Rashford assist. Let's see. Oh, the other one was a 3-3? Three, three? I think that was before Bruno came into the team, I believe. I could be wrong. But yeah, we, 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 we scored quite a few goals versus them. So, could be a... We'll probably keep Bruno for, for that for sure. Um, then in uh, game week 14, uh, City plays Southampton. But um, uh, Liverpool play Crystal Palace, which is a better fixture than I think than United versus Leeds. Um, even though United's at home, uh, Leeds will leave you know potential you know uh, stuff on the counter. Um, but it could be it could be one of those ones where Leeds just press us too much and Fernandez doesn't really get too much. Plus the fixture after that isn't great uh, with with Leicester. Uh, so I would potentially take Fernandez out for those two weeks. I would bring in like Salah or Mane again, um, and then um, in uh, game week. Uh, have I done this calculation right? Can't remember if I've done this calculation right. And then it would be. Liverpool versus West Brom. Unless I've... Have I done this calculation wrong? No, it would be Mares. Oh, no. It was... Um, yeah, it was this. So, it was then... Uh, bring in... Bring in Mane and then get rid of um, get rid of Wilson uh, for uh, Brewster, or the other option was um, was to get rid of Calvert uh, Calvert Lewin um, and get another cheap forward. One of one of the two. Um, it was something like that, basically. Um, that's kind of virtuous. And I have it written down um, in, in, a, in a spreadsheet, but um, I have to pull that out. But um, yeah, that's basically what we were, what we would uh, potentially look to do. But we're not going to do anything until um, don't have permission to perform this action at this time. What? Login. There we go. Oh, they've done the substitute in now as well. So, um, here we go. Not sure why it logged me out, but that was a bit weird. Um, but yeah. So, should I keep Che Adams for Brighton at home next game week? I would think so. I mean, I don't, I think he was unlucky not to get potentially something versus United. He did play quite well. I don't know. He might have actually got something versus United. Uh, where is he to? No, he didn't get anything, but I still think he should be okay. I also think that once Danny Ings is back, he, it helps him a lot as well. And I think Danny Ings is supposed to be back this week, potentially. Whether that's in training or actually playing, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I would say hang on to him. He's in the 6 million bracket, so I could potentially get him in for uh, 15, which where they play Fulham. So there you go. Uh, if I were to get rid of Calvert-Loon. Because Everton play... Sheffield, which is a good fixture, but would need the funds. Um, but it could also just play Bruce, just take out Wilson, who plays City, and just uh, bring in Brewster, and then just play one of my defenders extra. So I would just play. Um, I wouldn't play Kilman. I would play uh, Lamptey versus West Ham, and then my other defender is Ailing, who would play Burnley. So that should that would be fine if I did that, and then I would wildcard the team afterwards. So. Got 59 points minus four, which is 55 points this week. Think, uh, think we both uh, on a green arrow. Yep, we are both on a green arrow. Uh, I am definitely on a green arrow for sure. Uh, went up like 200k places or thereabouts. Let's actually check that. Yeah, so we went up about eh, 170k ish, 160k ish places. So uh, not too bad overall. 
Um, they actually changed the game week rank. So let me change that so I can get that more accurately. Zero six can get rid of that. And then my overall rank is 1.57. No, 1.58 actually 1.58 there we go so now that's up to date but um yeah so yeah this is basically what the the team is looking like uh for now captain c is going to be almost certainly de bruyne um because we're bringing him in no matter what um but we will have to see um how it works out basically um yeah, I'm pretty sure I had a situation where I only needed to transfer. Unless I did something really wonky and don't know how to do math, but. Um, yeah, so Sterling would be out for Mars. So basically, by the end of it, it'd be Sterling out for Mars. Kane was out for Wilson. Rodriguez would have been out for Sala. Uh, this was De Bruyne. No, I must have taken out a striker. I must have just wrote it down wrong uh, when I was working it out today, but something like that, basically. Uh, potentially, though, oh, if this is De Bruyne. Another way to get in uh, Mane would be um, just get a four million defender for for Tellus, but then we need to play somebody else. But that would be a bit uh, bit of a pain to do so. Um, overall, would be a bit of a pain to do so overall. But uh, yeah, I think we've pretty much covered uh, covered everything um, this week that we need to cover. 44 average points this week was it let's see it was yeah i think the top 10k was around like 48 49 thereabouts um so the closer and closer you get uh to that uh the top 10k the um the further and further away from this you need to be so since we were up eight points away from it next week we'll need to be 10 points away from it 12 points away from it you know Mine all red, so not updated yet. Yeah, I mean, mine hasn't... I don't think mine... Uh, no, mine has changed, so we'll see. Uh, may need to just refresh. Looks like 560k. Yep, not too bad. Again, by the time the Christmas period's over, I want to be well into the... Um, well into the, you know, 500... Like, below the 500k mark for sure. Um, would ideally like to be at the 100k mark um, if we can and then slowly make our way into the top 10k and then make our way into the top um, into the four digits and that's that's what we want so yeah that's going to do it for this one if you haven't done so already make sure to give us a follow on here on twitch we will be doing another deadline ish stream uh that's gonna be uh this week uh thursday that is the third of december we're finally in the christmas month uh for those that celebrated or Hanukkah or whatever uh, types of uh, uh, festivities you like to uh, endeavor in. Getting into the Christmas period, which is always fun because that means there's more games to, to come. Um, when do the midweek games start to actually take place? So not the 11th uh, or the um, game week 11, not game week 12. Uh, game week 12 and game week 13. So after game week 12, it's going to be tough for me to do videos. There's going to probably be streams from then on out over that period. Maybe I'll try to fit in a video every now and again, but it's going to be jam-packed. Um, so after this week, uh, it's probably just going to be a stream, maybe two streams, and then like a video because of the how jam-packed uh, these, these weeks are going to be. Um, so like if you look game week 12, uh, there's games on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then there's games immediately on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then there's games on Saturday, Sunday again, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, then there's a little bit in between uh, the Boxing Day 
in between the, the before the Boxing Day fixtures. Um, but the, you know, there's FA Cup games, so maybe we do something, you know, different there. Um, then there's games like there's literally games on the 26th, 27th, and then there's a ga- there's games on the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Then there's games on the 2nd of January. So like it's going to be pretty hectic. So uh, make sure to f- follow us on Twitter for sure because we'll we'll have updates for that. Uh, for the content that's going out uh, for the week. I haven't posted the content for this uh, this week as of yet, but it's going to be the same as last week, same videos and that sort of stuff. And then the following week, it's going to be, you know, just streams and whatnot um, for, for the most part. Um, and what I'll probably do is incorporate in, like, who the captaincy picks are for the week, who the um, who my buy-hold sells are for that week, like, in the preview slash, uh, you know, deadline slash whatever stream you want to call it the i don't know the 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 christmas stream i i don't know we'll call it something um but yeah it, it we'll have to kind of figure it out uh on, on that front but yeah uh and make sure to go check us out uh subscribe over on youtube if you haven't done so lastly if you want to support the channel you can do so it is not required but it's definitely appreciated you can get to use uh depending on the tier of your sub uh here on twitch uh, you can get this, uh, get the first emote is the, um, is the, the one that you will get. If it's a tier two, you get this extra silver looking one. And then the gold one is for a tier three. So, uh, once we move over to YouTube exclusively, these, uh, emotes and stuff will transfer, um, over as well. I also have to put on the badges, um, uh, as well. Uh, it's going to be uh, not just l- a little star. Uh, we actually have little flame emotes, almost like uh, Pokemon gym badges, or they, they look like gems. They look pretty cool. I haven't put them up yet, uh, but they will be out um, if I remember to do them by the next uh, next stream. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.